Hello and welcome to another Orbiter video. In this video we're going to start out docked at the ISS, the International Space Station, and we're going to transfer from uh, from here over to the moon and do a moon landing. So I was going to actually pick up the same scenario from the last video where I went from KSC up to the ISS, but I didn't I don't have my quick saves turned on and I forgot to save it at the end. So uh, this scenario comes with the orbiter. It's in the Delta Glider folder and it's just called docked at ISS. So that's the one I'm using for the starting point. So let's go ahead, switch camera views, unpause, and we'll get started. Welcome aboard, okay. Commander. All systems nominal. And I did remember to turn off the ATC chatter, I hope, because that definitely was uh, getting a bit annoying. All right, so one of the challenges that we face going from the ISS to the moon is um, we're not in plane at all. I think, it's, I think we're really far off. So to go to the moon, uh, we have a few different options sort of the absolute beginner approach would be to maybe undock from the ISS and then do like this huge plane change. Um, we're not going to do that though. I think we can, you know, even though it's been a really long time since I've done any of this, I think I still remember enough to do better than that. So let's uh, bring up the line plane MFD and let's just kind of take a look how, how things are. So yeah, you can see that our relative inclination, um, you know, if we wanted to have a zero relative inclination with the moon, we would just do this enormous plane change. And again, going back to my old videos, you know, plane change equals expensive, so we don't want to do that. So let's bring up uh, TransX instead. I did go ahead and install the new TransX, not the one that comes with Orbiter 2016, but the one that you can download. I don't remember my way around TransX very well, but I spent so much time with it that I should be able to figure it out, hopefully. So uh, let's see here. So we're in view setup. So we have a select target set as planets and moons, which I believe that's what we want. So we hit the plus plus to select the moon. Uh, so far that's looking good. And let me bring up uh, TransX also on the right side. And we're gonna go forward on that side so that we can view the encounter. So now we need to uh, view on this side to get into the maneuver mode. And then we're going to turn on maneuver and then go through our variables until we find um, prograde and, and then date. So first thing I'm going to do is just put in a bunch of prograde to see how much I need to get out to the orbit of the moon. And I know it's somewhere around 3.1 something thousand so we'll start with that so right now we're at 2.3.0 uh, now we'll go to a finer adjustment and put in some more plane change or rather prograde and so that looks like approximate that's pretty close to what we need now we have to figure out when it is that we're going to do this this burn so let's uh, use our variable and for the date, we want to go down to a pretty, uh, let's see, was it not hyper, but super or ultra because the date's quite sensitive when we're only talking about, you know, minutes and hours. So let's start with the, let's start with super. Actually, even that might be too much. So let me actually reset the date and let's go into ultra. That's better. And uh, so this, this uh, white line uh, represents the line of nodes. And if we can arrive at the moon on that line, then, um, then we can avoid a costly plane change. The plane change will just be part of our, uh, part of our, our main burn, essentially. Or we'll be arriving in plane with the moon. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's bring it around over to here. And now let's back up to prograde and take out some of this prograde. 
because right now it has us over shooting the moon and you can see on the right side the encounters starting to show up so so it's looking okay I'm not super happy with how all this is coming together but let's uh let's add in a bit more So I can see the focus PED, which is going to be our uh, essentially our closest approach coming down. Now we we want to uh, consider also that we want to arrive at a at a base when we get there. Um, I might not tackle that level of complexity in this one. I might just kind of go out towards the moon and then worry about the base correction when I'm at about the halfway point. I don't know if I want to introduce too many things all at once here. <laughs> But I remember um, you, you could actually make your arrival, you, you could actually calculate or figure out how to arrive so that you would be in plane with the base that you're tar targeting while you're still here in orbit around um, Earth. But let's, uh, let's actually not plan on doing that. We'll, we'll save that extra layer for another, for another time. So just by using um, prograde and date, we're getting, we're we're getting there, but we're still pretty far out. But let's uh, let's tinker with the date a little bit. Now that we've adjusted prograde, and we'll go down to the hyper setting. And yeah, that's that's helping tremendously. And yeah, we're we're already we're there basically. So if we go, let's say, around there, <clears throat> and then go back to the prograde and that's going the wrong way so let's bring it down so yeah just with a little bit of date and prograde we're able to get all the way out where we want to be and uh, I believe this is a subterranean um, uh, target at the moment at the moment so technically we'll be going through the moon but you know with with the inaccuracies we know that all that's going to change. So let's see, how far out in the future is this burn? So we're at 51,982.07. So it's not far. So um, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's plan on doing this. I'm not going to fuss around with lots of uh, refinement. Let's just see. Let's just do this. So we're going to do Control-D to undock. Undocking confirmed. And we'll use a little bit of time warp to allow the springs from the... Uh, from the undocking procedure just to push us away on its own translation and we'll switch to translation and maybe we'll plan on uh, translating you know up relative to our current line of sight so we'll put in a little bit of up translation and hoping that we're not running into anything and we're not so a bit of time warp just to get some separation and maybe uh Maybe we'll push a little bit of reverse translation as well, just to give us uh, some separation because our our burn date's not real far off in the future. And maybe a little bit more in this direction. All right, that should be good. All right, now, uh, so on the left side of TransX, we're gonna view over to um, target and our burn is it's it's a little ways out in the future yet so let's uh, just do a bit of time warp here that'll give us good separation from the ISS and I guess while we're doing that we can also close up the nose cone don't need to have that open and yeah hopefully by the time we get to the burn we'll have lots of separation between us and the ISS and we won't you know, accidentally fly through it or something like that. I've definitely had that happen. <laughs> so let's switch over to the orbit HUD. And let's just uh, warp time forward until we're at about a thousand seconds or so and maybe also kind of keep an eye on you know, where the ISS is at. I have no idea where it's at. I guess I can use F9 maybe to spot it. No, I don't see it. So, okay, well, that went by quick. Um, yeah, we're coming up to our burn here pretty fast. So let's uh, let's actually go to prograde 
again, it's more efficient if we do this manually, but we're not going to worry about those types of things at the moment. And let me see here. I know there's a there's a variable here for automatically lining up auto center. There it is. <clears throat> so we just want to turn that on. We're still 200 seconds out, but we'll go ahead and turn it on now. Uh, this is one of the nice things about downloading the uh, sort of alternate version of Transex, the version that's built in. I don't believe it has these features. I don't think Orbiter 2016, I don't think they included the like non-official version of Transex. Um, now, I also looked at uh, Burn Time Calculator a little bit, trying to remember a little bit about how it gets used. And with this version of Burn Time Calculator, we can press the Get button, and it will get the the time to do the burn and all of the delta V calculations from Transex, put it into burn time calculator and handle the burn force automatically. So I, yeah, I didn't actually remember it being that easy, but uh, I really need to go back and look at my videos on how burn time calculator works. Cause I, I just, I remember I used that MFD for just about everything. At any rate, we're about three minutes away from the burn. So let's go ahead and warp time forward, get a little bit closer to that time and I seem to recall also that with auto center and burn time calculator you can warp time forward all the way through the burn with no issue uh, so we'll test that theory as well why not and you can see auto center has us held and there goes uh, 5,000 burn time calculator doing its job I think we might be getting closer to the ISS because I just heard 5,000 Hopefully we're not going to fly through it. Maybe that, hopefully that just means we're getting farther away. Okay, so um, we're going to switch off auto center right away. We're going to view over to the maneuver and turn off maneuver mode. And on this side, we're going to bring up transax. And hmm, looks like we're, our encounter isn't showing anything. That's a bit scary. Let's, uh, but I can see the closest approach. So, so it looks like there's just a little bit of a timing issue there. So not a big problem, but I'm just using forward translation to clean up the last little bit of Delta V that apparently was missing from our burn. And I do remember that kind of thing happening. So you can see our focus PED coming down, getting really close and tight to the moon now. And at any point here, I would say we're good to stop because um, I don't know what's going to happen as we go forward. If the if the encounter is going to push us further into the moon or take us further away. So I'm just going to say what we have here is fine. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, warp time forward now to get out away from Earth and get uh, uh, you know at, le at least at least out to a point where we can do some kind of mid-course correction and that does take a little bit of time and it looks like our focus is going um, like up uh, trending tending to go away from the moon but I'm not gonna make any corrections yet I'm gonna wait till you know we're away from earth Let's bring up orbit, and that'll give us an indicator. I think it's when, yeah, so now we're technically uh, with sun information, and then it'll switch over to the moon. If we, let's target, uh, or actually it's just no target. There we go. And let's reference the moon, and that way we can have an indication for how long, much longer it's going to be before we are within the moon's um, SOI. And I think it's when we get to point one eight or something like that. 
but yeah, it looks like we're gonna. We're, I mean, obviously, we're definitely gonna have to do a mid course correction. But our focus PD is is trending, you know, out away from the moon. But uh, all of that was expected. Um, actually, what we could do now, even even though we've got a bit to go, we could actually consider some sort of mid course correction. Um, just based on you know using linear translation and seeing what happens. So I don't even know what direction we're pointed at the moment uh, relative to the moon. We could copy the moon's information up to the HUD, but what I'm going to do is just tap my translations and see what happens with the focus PED. So let's try some forward thrust. So that's not helping. Let's try um, up-down translation. So let's try down. That's not helping. Let's try up translation. Okay, so that is improving it a bit. Let's try uh, lateral side to side. So it looks like lateral in and up is currently what we want. Lateral to the left, up, and then maybe a bit of forward translation. But let's start with lateral and up, kind of putting those together. And let's try uh, uh, reverse translation. That's not doing as much as the other ones. So we'll go, we'll just put in a bit of these just to bring down that focus PED a little bit. Okay, so, you know, that's improving things for us a little bit. Now, what I don't remember how to do is within Transex, we can we can target the base but i don't remember how to do that so let's look at um so on the left side let's look at setup so we have select target planets moons let's adjust that ships hmm so it just goes ships and planets moons so i can't remember how do we target the base so hmm i can't remember so maybe if I go into maneuver mode and then let me just go through the variables that we have here. So it doesn't appear to be those. On this side, let's view. Okay, yeah, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look at one of my old videos to figure that one out. So we won't we won't try to do that. So for now, let's just try to bring our focus PED down a little bit because while we're in between bodies like this, um, you know, we can make pretty significant changes with just a little bit of linear translation and then it doesn't cost us a lot of uh, delta V. So we're getting pretty close to a number that we'll be happy with. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, and uh, let's just continue to warp time forward. You know what it might be? It might be that we have to be within the moon's SOI before we get the information in TransX that I'm looking for. Not sure. Or was it that I had to have it? Did I, maybe, uh, for some reason I'm thinking I have to reference the moon on the map and then target the base I want. Ah, yeah, that was it. That's it. So yeah, I, I forgot that those are somehow tied together. So I brought up map MFD, referenced the moon, targeted Brighton Beach, which is where I want to land, and now Transex is giving me the information for how far off the base I'm going to be. Okay, so let's bring Transex back up, and let's see if we can uh, figure out how to do a maneuver that'll get us closer to the plane of the base. Uh, when we arrive. So we'll turn maneuver mode on and we will um, kind of just tinker with our with our velocities and see what happens with our off-plane distance. So let's put in like one as an example. So that didn't bring it down tremendously. So let's, uh, or I should say 0.1. So that's negative 1.1 and when I reset that yeah, so that, I mean, I didn't put in a lot, obviously, but that didn't have a huge impact. Um, let me actually try that again, but let me put in more velocity. So let's go 
let's put in say 10 or 5 I think 5 is a good number so actually that has a pretty huge difference uh, just for 5 Delta V so that that was a 600 kilometer gain essentially so it looks like with just just 11 so with just around 13 delta V we can pretty much get to the base using prograde so let's kind of make a mental note of that 13 gets us there with prograde only so let's reset that and see if we can beat it with one of the other velocities like a change plane so let's go down to super and I just I can pretty much tell that's that's going to be a negative on that one. So let's reset that one and let's try. We have one more, which is outward. And let's see if outward does us any better. Okay, so hmm, I can't remember what, why it is that uh, you lose that information. Off plane distance goes away when we get to this point, and I can't remember why that is. So maybe it's because we're running into the moon or something like that. So let's reset. Let's uh, plan on using, some, and it could also be you know some combination of the three. Most likely would be the very best. So let's maybe tinker around with that for just a moment, but we're not going to mess with it too much because we're only talking about, you know, 10 delta V. So we know that uh, prograde was helping us a lot. So let's put in prograde to bring it down to say, you know, something like that. And let's uh, tinker around with adding in just a bit of outward and then our, our overall cost. Okay, and you can see that's 180 meters, which is, you know, that's there. So, uh, we c you know, with this uh, stuff, we can we can fiddle with it all day, and, um, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, our focus PED did go way up, though, which I don't want. So, was that because of the prograde? Yeah, so let me take out some of that prograde. Yeah, I think what must be happening is when the focus PED goes below 1.738, we lose the off-plane distance. That seems to be exactly what's happening, and that makes sense. Okay. So we so we and so we don't want to arrive at the moon with this enormous orbit that we have to uh, get rid of. So so it looks like a little bit of prograde and just a little bit of outward. gets us where we want to be um, went the wrong way on that okay and just bear with me while I go back and forth between these just for a moment just to so as we add in prograde we're increasing our altitude significantly and then let's add in some and then as we add in outward it's bringing down the base distance and decreasing our altitude so yeah those I think that combination is what I'm looking for and as long as we get reasonably close we won't fiddle with it extensively so that and then if we back up to prograde So just a little bit more prograde. Okay, okay. I, th I have the pattern now. And then finally back over to outward, and I think this will give us what we're looking for. Um, might have overdone the prograde.
okay I think that that looks pretty good to me and again without you know spending an eternity messing with all these things which is really easy to do with uh, with transx so now we just need to pick a date at some point you know in the not too far flung future so we're at a micro setting let's maybe back up to hyper and we're at 4153 right now let's make the maneuver at 41. 73 I'm not actually sure how much time that gives us uh, three minutes that's that's fine okay so let's go to Auto Center and we'll plan on doing this burn which will hopefully uh, get us in a decently low orbit around the moon while also having us in line with the base that we want to land at so let's bring up uh, burn time. Let's get the maneuver from burn time once uh, Transex finishes settling here. Give it a bit of time warp to help that speed up. Okay, let's get the maneuver and let's just go ahead and warp time forward. What are we looking at here? 5.8 delta V, so 5.9 delta V. So really small burn, just a really quick burst. In fact, we don't really even need to have burn time calculator do that. We could just, you know, use linear translation, but but I like the tools that we have available to us. So this burn will complete in just another moment here. And that's it. <laughs> that's the burn complete. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Transex. So currently we're looking at just being a kilometer off from the base and, uh, you know, a few kilometers up above the moon. So I think that's looking good. Let's go ahead and switch camera views over to the overlay. And that's going to wrap it up for this, uh, this part. So when we come back, we'll pick up right from here. In fact, I'll just pause the simulator. Uh, we'll pick up right from this point, continue on out to the moon and see how we do. Hopefully, Hopefully I can remember enough to get us there. Uh, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button, and I will see you in the next part.